Joining us now is Kate Ackley. Kate is a reporter with uh, CQ Roll Call, and she joins us now to talk about the state of lobbyist money in the presidential primaries. Kate, thanks so much for joining us. Thanks so much for having me. So your piece, uh, tell us a little bit. You looked at lobbyist uh, money in the, in the primaries uh, among the various campaigns. How did you go about tracking down this money and tying it, linking a specific candidate to lobbyists? Uh, that's right. We looked at sort of two different pots of money and, and ways that lobbyists give to the presidential candidates. And the, the first one is the campaigns themselves, the presidential campaigns, have to disclose when lobbyists are bundling contributions. And what bundling is sort of a fancy word for meaning gathering up a bunch of contributions. So if you have a lobbyist that's getting all their colleagues and their friends to give money to, say, Hillary Clinton or Marco Rubio or Jeb Bush or, or whoever, uh, then, they, then the campaigns have to file a disclosure saying, we have a lobbyist bundler and this is their name. Uh, Hillary Clinton... Marco Rubio and Jeb Bush uh, are the ones that in the last half of last year had lobbyist bundlers, so we, we saw you know, how much money they were collecting, on be that the lobbyists were collecting on behalf of those campaigns. But then we looked at another uh, sort of pocket of money from lobbyists. Lobbyists have to file their, their own disclosure reports with Congress saying, the individual contributions that they themselves have made to candidates and campaigns. So we looked at both of those, and if you combine that, uh, Hillary Clinton got the most from, from lobbyists. She got uh, directly $100 million in contributions from individual lobbyists, and then lobbyists helped her bundle $2 million worth of contributions. She got how much from individual lobbyists? $100 million. Wow. Um, so uh, uh, let me ask you uh, a couple things about that. Uh, I'm sorry. One. That's just one million. I I, I thought that's what you meant. <laughs> yeah. 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 Uh, is a hundred is about one hundred and fifteen million. Right. Right. So I'm sorry. Yeah, one million from lobbyists. Direct donations. One million uh, direct donations from lobbyists. Right. Got it. OK. And and uh, so. OK. So uh, let us now talk a little bit about first about the bundling, because I think, you know, people hear the term. They don't necessarily know what it means. But uh, l let's start with this. Uh, people there are campaign limits, limits to an amount every individual can contribute to a campaign in primary season and then in the general election. Right. 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 And those limits. And that's twenty-seven hundred dollars <clears throat> right now. Twenty-seven for a family or for an individual. For an individual. For an individual. Uh, so, uh, but people of wealth and influence, people like lobbyists, can also, in effect, um, donate their time and their influence to a campaign by, as you say, going out and asking people to contribute. So, where are, if I were a lobbyist, I might be limited to writing a check for twenty-seven hundred dollars. <throat> to a candidate, and obviously that's significant because uh, it's known that I lobby for certain things, but I could also conceivably bundle an enormous amount of money for that client at the same time, which would be even more impressive, perhaps even get that client's uh, that candidate's attention even more so. So uh, the fair description of the bundling process? A absolutely, and one thing that lobbyists do is they might host a fundraiser. Let's say they, they host a fundraiser in their home, and they get 100 people to come, and all those people are going to give donations to, to the, the candidate, um, then that would also be sort of part of the bundling, you know, experience. Yeah, okay, great. So, uh, so uh, and that might also make an impression on someone. Uh, uh, Absolutely. Okay, so, and then you, you looked at, and so the candidates that are doing that now, there are two on the Republican side, Rubio and... Bush is the other one? I'm That's sorry. That's correct. Yeah. Right. And uh, on the Democratic side, Clinton. But then you also looked at um, at uh, individual contributions from people who are registered lobbyists, right? Right, because they have to file disclosures with Congress. It's it's part of their own, uh, you know, the lobbying disclosure mm -hmm. um, system. They have to file the, all the contributions that they made. Uh, it, it even includes charitable donations and things like that that are that are aimed at honoring a certain candidate or lawmaker mm -hmm. um, and and every one of the uh, sort of leading presidential contenders 
got some money from lobbyists, even Donald Trump, who says he doesn't want lobbyist money. Uh, you know, Ted Cruz um, also says that he he's not going to do what D.C. lobbyists tell him, um, and that you know that may be the case. But they are receiving contributions from federal lobbyists. So uh, okay, well that's interesting, and um, this could be. This could be one lobbyist writing a check or a couple, or it could be a bunch of them writing small amounts. I guess it's also worth mentioning that some, while we think of lobbyists as representing big corporations and so on, and I suppose, or special interests like professional groups or whatever, and I suppose the, major, the vast majority of them do, there are also lobbyists who lobby for clean air or, or water or right, unions what have you. have registered lobbyists. Right. I mean, it, does, it you know, it, it ranges. Uh, all across the, the political spectrum, and certainly the corporate and uh, and issue spectrum. So, under uh, uh, this is a, a related question. I don't know if you know the answer to it off the top of your head. We're talking with Kate Ackley of CQ Roll Call about lobbying donations in the presidential campaigns so far, uh, or up through the end of last year. Um, w- under what circumstances do you have to? I know there's sort of a little uh, sense that there's people push the envelope on this when they leave Congress, for example, sometimes, but under what conditions are you required to register as a lobbyist? Uh, It's a good question. It's under the Lobbying Disclosure Act, and and basically you have to um, spend at least 20 percent of your professional time, you know, in lobbying activities or preparing for lobbying activities and things like that. And you also have to make at least two contacts to covered officials. And the covered officials are people like members of Congress, pretty much anybody who works on Capitol Hill in a lawmaker's office is a covered official. And then at the executive branch in the, uh, in the administration, uh, you have several people in the agencies, high-level folks, um, who are also considered covered officials. So if you, if you lobby them or if you make your case to just one of them, uh, then you don't have to register as a lobbyist necessarily. But once you've talked to two people or emailed two people in, in, on behalf of a client, uh, then and, and you're spending at least 20% of your time on those lobbying activities, then that theoretically that triggers the, the need to file as a federal lobbyist. Uh, you know, it's, it's not clear how well this is policed, whether people sh- who should be registering always are. But that's the that's the guideline. So well, I was going to ask you about that. Sounds like it might be tough to police. So uh, the one thing that this uh, story, which was an interesting story, uh, thanks for it. The one thing that it didn't cover is super PACs uh, and other organizations that might cooperate with a campaign, right? I mean, a lobbyist could conceivably contribute large sums to those, and I think we might not even know, right? Well, you know, that's true. Some of the individual lobbyists who filed their uh, their contribution disclosure forms actually did put uh, donations to super PACs, but that's it's not required. So they were over-reporting when, when people reported those donations. They didn't actually have to do that on those forms, but some people put them anyway, and maybe because it was just easier for them to list all their donations. But, but in reality, lobbyists give sort of the money that they give is more the hard dollars, the money that goes directly to the campaigns and candidates. Uh, they certainly do and, and, and can give to super PACs, um, but that's a level of, of donors. You know, we think of those as sort of the multimillionaires and the billionaires who really, you know, give huge amounts of money to the super PACs. And, and lobbyists, with some exceptions, uh, you know, they just – they don't give to that level. They're mm-hmm. not giving to the level of, um, you know, like the Koch brothers or something. They're 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 rich, right? But maybe not by uh, by billionaire standards. Um, so no, we didn't look specifically at super mm-hmm. PACs, but certainly uh, that's part of the big money that's helping some of the candidates, uh, you know, stay afloat and be competitive. As, as long as it might take getting through this uh, primary process on both sides. You know, that's actually a great point. Of course, lobbyists uh, make an ex- extremely good living in this town, by and large, but they do, they're do they not the billionaires. Um, they're the ones who are extracting money from the billionaires. They're, they're billionaires are their clientele. The billionaires are their clients, right. And we've looked at top 
top donor lobbyists before, I, I've called them the mini mega donors because they do give big money, the, the folks who are at the top. But in an election cycle, um, you know, they might give a total of $150,000 or $200,000. That would put, if you're a lobbyist and you're giving at that level, that's going to put you in the top tier among sort of, you know, lobbyist donors. But if you look at, you know, in the, in the billionaire world, you know, billionaires are going to write a $200 check, uh, you know, on a Thursday and then turn around on a Friday and write, uh, you know, a million-dollar check. Right. So it's not, it's not to that same level. But, but they also have, uh, you know, a, sort of a, a role to play in some of these campaigns and in the fundraising in that you point out they, they do work oftentimes for uh, the, you know, Wall Street firms, and, and they have a lot of connections with people who are in that, uh, you know, mega – mega millionaire billionaire class so you've got that but they also have policy expertise they have political savvy and you know presidential candidates just like anybody running for any office is going to want to tap that you know these are some of the smartest political operatives around and some of the smartest policy folks uh so some of the work that they can do to help campaigns and candidates is actually uh, n- not related to the money that they're helping bring in. And they can all, uh, right, absolutely. And, uh, of course, that money includes potentially the billionaire money if they're working with the billionaires as well. But, um, okay, last question for you, uh, Kate Ackley of the of CQ Roll, Roll Call. Uh, Jeb Bush is one of the presidential contenders with who has lobbyist bundlers, and of course he has a super PAC. He did extremely well in the fundraising department. I think 103 million to, uh, initially, um, and he did quite poorly this week in um, in Iowa, and in general is not polling well. Uh, do you think there are people running around feeling they didn't get their money's worth? I'm sure that's the case. I think a lot of people who are lobbyist donors who got behind Jeb Bush a year ago this time, you know, thought he was inevitable, right? We we thought that we thought we knew so much at the beginning of this race that has turned out to be uh, completely untrue. Um, some of them gave out a loyalty to the Bush family, uh, as you can imagine, having had you know already two President Bushes. You have a lot of people around Washington, D.C. who are lobbyists and, and sort of policy folks who, who trace, you know, tie, who worked for one or both Bushes, so they have a sense of loyalty to the family. Uh, is it wasted money? It's hard to say. I'm sure you can talk to some folks who would say, look, I do, I'll give whatever I have to to the Bush family because I am loyal to them. Uh, other people stayed out of the race because they didn't want to throw money at something that they didn't know was a sure thing. Um, you know, but when you talk to campaign finance experts, a lot of them will tell you that there's not necessarily, you know, it's kind of an unsophisticated way of looking at it that just because you get the most money that you're sure to get the most right. votes. It's obviously not like that. What, but what the money does give you is an opportunity to present your case to the voters, whereas if you don't have billionaire backing and, and lots of uh, lobbyist money and so forth, Maybe you never even got a chance to, uh, to to make your case to voters in Iowa, New Hampshire, and elsewhere. So it, yeah, it's not well, a sure bet. It's never well, a sure bet. But, it, you know, it is a bit of a gamble, too, for the donors. You're absolutely yeah, right. Uh, $2,800 per vote, we're told, in Iowa. I, I, I guess, yeah, I guess the, the lesson there to kind of re- agree with what you're saying is, is all things being equal between two reasonably good candidates— uh, money can make an enormous difference, perhaps the difference between winning and losing. But if, if you don't have it, if you can't close the deal, as they say, then the money won't close the deal for you. You've got to be uh, you've got to be a compelling candidate. I have to say, don't get mad at me, Kate. Uh, but when you were talking about giving because of loyalty to the family, and I don't mean to disrespect the Bush family, but I couldn't help think thinking of the funeral scene in The Godfather, you know. <laughs> That, uh, you guys, uh, to respect the family, uh, I know that's not what you meant, and and um, but it's a fascinating. It is a fascinating phenomenon. It kind of I I enjoyed your reporting on this. It's kind of a glimpse into a side of uh, uh, how Washington works that people don't see. So, th- and I assume you're going to stay on this, right? Absolutely, yes. I mean, I think that the that this is likely to be a record-breaking uh, election in terms of the money spent on it. So we will definitely be uh, following this story. 
Well, we'll we'll keep following you guys. So, uh, Kate Ackley from CQ Roll Call, thanks for reporting this and thanks for coming on the program. Thanks so much for having me on.